Hello, I am Dr. Millicent Thomas. In this video, I would like to explain how to get a graphical representation for the data what we collect. The main objective of this video on picturing data with graphs is how to identify variables of an individual, dividing the variables into two types, one a categorical one and the other one as quantitative, how to find a different types of graph for a categorical data. They are bar graph and pie charts and how to find the different ways of uh, finding charts for quantitative data, say histograms, dot plots, and stem plots, and also how to interpret a histogram. Individuals are objects described by a set of data. Individual may be people or animal or thing. Variable is any one characteristic of an individual. It can take different value for different individual. The variable can be either quantitative like age, blood pressure or height. Or it can be categorical, for example, the blood type or if you want to represent that using the gender. So that will be defined as categorical one. There are two ways of representing a categorical data. The first graph is a bar graph. For example, if I have individuals as students and if I'm collecting information from them about their favorite colors, Maybe I can represent that data using a graph like a bar graph as shown in this diagram with the number of students for their favorite color, say red. I have a number of students who are interested in uh, whose favorite color is red, blue, green, black, pink and all that. So that will be a representation for the categorical data, which is the favorite color. So the individual is a student and the variable is the favorite color. Or we can also have a pie chart as shown in this diagram. We have the sales in different categories, clothing, footwear, accessories, fragrance, etc. These are all the different categories for the individual sale and that will be a graphical representation for a categorical data. Instead, if I have a quantitative data like the height or the weight, I can represent the, that quantitative data using three different types of graphs, histogram, dot plot, stem and leaf plot. Let us see what a dot plot is. Here I have an example. There is a survey and the question is, how long does it take for a person to eat a breakfast? So you have uh, data here collected, which gives the number of people and the minutes they take to eat their breakfast. So this can be represented using a dot plot. You have a horizontal line. You have arranged that in a sorted out that in a ascending or descending order. So the minutes are starting from 0 to 12. Plot those points on a horizontal line 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. 12. And above 0, we have got six, the frequency is six. There are six people who have um, said that uh, they take six, um, zero minutes to eat the breakfast. So 
it means they maybe they do not uh, have a breakfast at all so i can have the dots stacked one above the other six dots one above the other for one i have two dots one above the other like that i can complete and this is a dot plot when you are making a dot plot always create a single axis which represent the variable the quantitative variable and you should have the range say in our example previous example it started from 0 to 12 now represent each data point as a dot and if there are multiple values stack them one above the other i have another example here the you have a raw data given first you sort them out sort that put that in proper order either in ascending order and descending order so you have started from 11 and ended at 40. so you have to have a horizontal line an axis and plot those points so we have taken the scale as 10 15 20 25 30 35 and 40. and on this line try to use those dots to represent these numbers so 11 is approximately marked here with the dot on it 12 etc see here 22 there are two 22s so you stack one above the other two 23s you stack them one above the other so this diagram here will represent a dot plot the second graph for a quantitative one is called stem plot sometimes it is also called stem and leaf plot how do we represent this it may be it may look like the stems are on one side leaves are on this side see suppose if it consists of um, um, the age of different group a group of uh, people there now if i talk about 66 and 3 here it represents the number 63 if i have a number 63 year old then i represent this as a stem leaf plot maybe the next example will give a clear idea about what the stem plot is let us take the same data what we took in uh, the dot plot we have sorted them out so take the stem as the first digit see it starts from 11 and ends with 40 so you take those numbers 1 the first digit here 2 3 and 4 write that as a stem so under 1 the 10 value see you have 11 12 14 18 there are four values for in the one digit so with starting with 1 so you have leaf as 11 12 14 18 the same way for 20s you have 20, 2 22 so you write two twos here 23 26 27 28 29 etc now suppose if i have a set of values where this 30 to 35 are missing even if those values are missing i will still write that 3 here but i leave uh, i will leave these leaf values empty so this is a diagram for a stem and leaf plot the third graph for a quantitative one is called a histogram the histogram may look like this it is a quantitative one so like age of people and you can find the number of people in that age group say between 0 to 5 5 to 10 10 to 13 or 13 to 18 13 to 17 17 to 21 etc so when you count the number of people maybe you can draw blocks like this like a bar graph what you do drew uh, there but it there is a slight difference between the bar graph and a histogram it looks like all these bars are clustered together there is no gap between these two and i cannot rearrange this whereas in a bar graph 
I can rearrange these bars, but in a histogram, I cannot rearrange these bars because on a on this horizontal line, I have the age, the quantitative. If I would like to rearrange this according to the height, maybe 13 to 17 should come uh, as a first uh, bar and then 9 through 13, etc. So that won't make any sense. That is the main difference between a bar graph and a histogram. The bar graph and histogram looks similar, but histogram you cannot rearrange these bars and also on the horizontal line you have a quantitative one a numerical value attached to this whereas in a bar graph you will have only a categorical one let us try to understand the histogram very clearly and let us take this example we have 72 guinea pigs and the survival time of 72 guinea pigs will be given. We are expected to construct a histogram with a class size of 50 starting from 0. Zeros included in the first class. Those 72 values are given in this table. It is already arranged. The minimum is 43 and the maximum is 598. We are asked to construct a histogram with a class interval of 50 where 0 is included in that first interval. So if I have to start from 0 with an interval of 50, maybe I have to divide this as 0 through 50. 50 to 100, 100 to 150, etc. And then count how many guinea pigs are there in that interval. So before constructing a histogram, it is better we prepare a table which is called a frequency table. So it is from 0 to 50, zeros included. Maybe in our previous table, we saw that there are two values which lies between 0 to 50. And when you count, say 50, 51, etc. up to 99, you may find 9, 28 values lying in that. So the frequency becomes 28. Like that, you can complete the whole table, which is called the frequency table. And using this table, we can easily draw the histogram. See, these are the 72 values given. So when you count uh, the values between 0 to 50, there are only two values, 43 and 45. So construct a bar just above 0 to 50, which, whose height is 2, which, where the, high, the frequency is 2. And between 50 to 100, you know that there are 28 values. 53 up to 99 here, there are 28 values. So the number what is written on top represents the frequency. Try to complete these um, bars which are lying above these uh, corresponding class intervals. So the completed diagram is called a histogram. You have to label this histogram. On the x-axis, you have the survival time of the guinea pigs. And on the y-axis, you have the frequency for each interval. How will you interpret a histogram? When you see a histogram, we can talk about the shape of it. We can approximate the midpoint of the whole data. We can see how the data is spread, that is, what the range is, what is your minimum, what is your maximum, that you can find from the diagram. Like, and we can also discuss about the outlier. For example, if I have a histogram, say I have a histogram drawn this way, I'm just giving this as an example.
So maybe I can imagine a smooth curve drawn about the, this uh, histogram here. So this looks like a symmetric curve. What is a symmetric curve? If I fold this at the center, the area to the right of it or the shape to the right of it will be the same as the shape to the left of it. So this type of uh, histograms may have a symmetric distribution. Sometimes the histogram may not be perfectly symmetric. It may be approximately symmetric. You can also have histograms of this type where it is skewed to the left or skewed to the right. See, you may have histograms like this. It is skewed to the right. There is a tail going to the right side of it, skewed to the right. And this one is skewed, the other one is skewed to the left. See this diagram here. I have a histogram where more, almost all the values are lying between, see this say maybe 40, 47 or something up to 85 or somewhat like that. But there is a small group of results which are in this range. So maybe this may be an outlier. So when you see a histogram, you can only approximate um, the midpoint, you can approximate um, um, and see whether it, it has an outlier or not. Maybe in our next chapter, we will find out a measurement to find um, um, whether a given result is an outlier or not. So in this video, we have discussed about the graphical representation of the data what we have collected. In fact, we talked about five different graphs, two for categorical values and three different graphs for quantitative ones. In my next video, I will post how to make use of our TI calculator, graphing calculator to draw a histogram. So that will clearly explain how to get the histogram, maybe even for this guinea pig problem what we did, I will show you how to find, make use of a graphing calculator to draw a histogram. Hope this video was helpful and hope it, you enjoyed watching this. Thank you. Thank you for your patience.